Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Anru. We are going to continue our discussion on this monster of a problem, which we identified the product from the spectra for and from the elemental analysis. Now we need to figure out the mechanism for this sucker. Hmm, that took a long time to get the just the product, so let's go on. Okay, so in terms of thinking about this, we need something that cuts uh, uh, cyclo um, carbon chain. Okay, so a cycloalkane, a cycloalkene. The only thing that we know from organic one that would cut a chain that looks that's like my um, reactant here is if I was able to cut this double bond, right? And if I was able to cut that double bond and get some carboxylic acids on the end, then I could do that if I had a triple bond there, and I could do that if I had used an ozone reaction. So here's my ozone reaction. Ozone and DMS, dimethyl sulfide. Okay, so in terms of looking at this, I could get from uh, something to here if I was able to cut that double bond, and the only way I can cut that double bond and result in two carboxylic acids is if I had a triple bond right there. So the question is, that's a really horrible triple bond, but you're gonna forgive me for that one. Um, the question is, how am I gonna get from the double bond to the triple bond? That's the next question. Okay, so this was a pretty obvious product based off of what we know. And we knew that there was only way to get from here, from really here to here, in terms of cutting and breaking up the cycloalkane. Actually, it's a cycloalkyne, technically, but you get what I'm saying. All right, so in terms of looking at this, we need to get from the al uh, the al wait, hold it. Stop for a moment. Alkanes are single bonds. Alkenes are double bonds. Alkynes are triple bonds. This is an alkene. I'm going to get from the alkene to the alkyne. All right, so how am I going to do that? Best way to do this, by the way, is to get uh, make basically that alkene go away, uh, put some leaving groups on it, and get the triple bond. That's what I need. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Eh, my favorite reaction for doing such things is to just use Br2 or Cl2. Makes it kind of easy. It's pretty good. You add a Br to either side of the double bond. Awesome. Okay, if I was doing a mechanism here, for this problem. Okay, so the synthesis in terms of mechanisms, right? We have a synth synthetic mechanism, which is just the idea of putting the multiple reactions together. And then we can use actual mechanisms for each reaction, which is the pushing of electrons. So essentially here, what I'm gonna do is I would have that Br to Br, Br2 is a nonpolar molecule, but it induces a dipole when I get close to that double bond. Ooh. So the double bond is the nucleophile. It attacks the Br. The electrons go on to the other Br, but at the same time, the Br is kind of a nucleophile um, because of these extra lone pairs. So the Br also attacks making the bridge telonium ion. Very weird, very complex. But this would be the specific mechanism for this problem. Okay, and I'm not gonna go on with that mechanism because that's not really the point we're dealing with right now. You can go back and review that specific mechanism for the bridge telonium ion on a previous um, video. What I need is I need to add those Br's. And what I know is that this is an anti this results in an anti-reaction, right? So an anti-addition, I should say, where one Br technically would be coming out towards me and the other Br would be going back, right? 
So they're going to add opposite each other. Because of this bridge telonium ion, it locks up one side. You have to have attack from the opposite side. All right, so I've added the Br2. That's awesome. To get from these two Brs um, on this particular uh, set of carbons to the alkyne, you just need a strong base. OK, so a strong base. You need two equivalents of it. I like that one. Let's do that one today. Sounds like a cool base. How do I know that this is a strong base or a strong nucleophile? Because it's charged, right? The Na doesn't matter here because it's just a counter ion. It's really that I have OETH minus. And if you're deconstructing that for a moment, OETH minus literally means O. The minus is on the O. And then an ethyl group coming off. Right? So what essentially is going to happen here is I'm going to go undergo two E2 reactions. Right? So I'm going to take off one of those BRs, make it into an alkene, take off another BR, make it into an alkyne. And then once I get to the alkyne stage, I can use my ozone reaction to get to the two carboxylic acids on either side and breaking up the chain. That is it, folks. And until next time, we shall talk again. I'll see you then.